Last time on... So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all! Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Biakia, what's your response? You don't need her getting all hot and bothered on court. Let's see. One, two, three, four! Here's my answer. In Wanda, the broken handbook. Your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? When the broken handbook that's in the hallway is not Leon's. What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago. Remember? Yeah, it was like two days ago. And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. Uh, oh, what are you sweating for, Mondo? No, wait! Hold on! You've got it all wrong! He would never kill! I don't accept this! Show me the proof! The actual solid proof! I mean, I don't want to believe it either, but... But I found something that proves it beyond the shadow of a doubt! That's the broken hand. Let's nope. test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! Damn it. See? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! I'm sure Mondo's handbook broke during their sauna showdown, and I can just prove it. So what would the handbook be? Oh, and it's Let's the broken Makoto's handbook. If what he said you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is up, then that proves that what Makoto... Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! No, that's wrong! Prove it! You remember... Mondo, each handbook. the handbook you have right now. Is it really yours? You can prove by turning it on, and it has the name of the user. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall. Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it! So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Oh, Leon's surprised. Which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? Can't loan it if you're dead. Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student, but if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm uh, wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... But... Son of a bitch! What's wrong, bro? Come on! 
Tell him he's wrong. Tell him he's wrong. He can't. You are wrong. You, are you wrong. have to be wrong. You have to be wrong. Everything you just said is wrong. You made it all up. Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time from the beginning? That way, everything will become clear, and we'll all see if I was right or wrong. No. No, I think this. Yeah. This is the little comics. I like this. This is. I think this all looks cool. I just. I like how this looks. Um. So that would be here. Chihiro stuffs it in, waves off. So we go here and use the key card to get into the boys' locker room. Where Chihiro meets with the killer and talks with them, says something to them. Two in which right. Whack. Uh, blood splat. Uh, I guess probably I'm assuming that because it wouldn't be the dumbbell showing it on the ground and then having the drop so nervous that they what they did so they rolled up the carpet does that, does that take down the poster or does that take what is that okay okay that must be taking it down because it's putting it up um Would it be that? And then... No, this would go here, so... Be take no, I can't be right. Let's move down a little bit further because this is all about Biakia now. So, do the bloodless stuff, and then this would be the sauna stuff. So it's not the doorknob or the dumbbell. Unless this goes here and this goes here. The killer is let's see if that's you. It. First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That I got that right. Thing was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this. Oh, I fat fingered it. My bad. With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? 
Those two are right? Simple. Because she was really a he. Which is why he was able to use his own e-handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Chihiro, and attacked him. Alright, got that and right. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the right, killer got right. to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. Okay. And finally carrying the corpse into the girls' locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girl's locker room without much problem. <laughs> I was right. I'm glad and I went that's back exactly and... exactly how the killer did it. Went over that. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. They changed the layout of the boys' and girls' locker room in what you might call... Yep. Bat figure. That could have been the end of things, but no. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to... intervene in the situation making things even more complicated. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. God! Looking at the string up in that like a cartoon or the that drawing looks a lot more brutal then using the victim's own blood he left a first and also that is a long ass est extension cord too he wanted to create the illusion that genocide jack was responsible but, for the slaughter what do you want And around the same time that the Yakuya was putting together this facade. I know, it's been a long day, isn't it, Dina? The killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's it's been bag a long and day. other belongings, arrived at the sauna. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence. Chihiro... Oop. Sorry, I thought you were done, Makoto. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out. Isn't that right, Mondo Owada? There we go. It was Mondo. Wait. This can't be right. Where's your evidence? Yeah, where's your evidence? I just gave you the evidence. You need evidence. You need proof. Well, easy. Mondo, turn on your you e-handbook. You don't need proof. You can't pin any of this on him. Evidence that Mondo is the killer that already revealed itself early in the trial. I could somehow show Mondo's handbook is right. Right now, once I do that, everything will become clear. Okay. All right. Absolutely. 
Let's talk about fever time and nega time. During the bullet time battle, if you press the R1. Oh. <laughs> uh, R1, fever time will activate and the tempo will be forced to max. At this point, even if you push the buttons at random, you won't miss. So you can press X, triangle, X, triangle, however you want to destroy the opponent's verbal assault. But this only lasts until your focus gauge runs out, so make possible boost of your time. Of course, it wouldn't be fair if only you got access to special timing, right? So we've also prepared something called Nega Time that your opponent can use. The opponent activates Nega Time during the bullet time battle. Your tempo marker would disappear, making it quite a bit tougher to hit the button in rhythm. If you were to activate Fear Time at this point, no, never mind. I'm sure nothing would happen. I don't know what I was worried about. Unsurprisingly, if your action difficulty is set to gentle, your opponent won't use Nega Time. Well then, good luck, have fun! Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refute you! False! Show me some evidence! I won't listen! False! I refuse to vote! Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refute you! False! Show me some evidence! I won't listen! False! You're corrupt! Show me- This should prove it! If my thinking so far is right, all he's got to do is show his handbook. Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we'll... We don't gotta do that. Huh? Yeah. 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 I did it. I did it. I killed him. A A A A B A A A A A A I really wrecked that one section. A oh, sixteen mishaps. Oh. Nice. Bro, bro, bro. What are you saying? What are you saying? I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that! Wait! Hold on! No waiting! No holding on! Time for the moment Time we've for the all moment been waiting, we've for. Been waiting for! Grab your lever and give it a yank! Who will you elect as the blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully, or the dreadfully wrong, one? wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? I mean, it's gonna be Mondo because we don't actually get a chance to choose. The time it looks like, or this time it looks like, you got it right again! Yes, it is so. The black end that killed Chihiro Fuku, uh, Fujisaki was... Mondo Uwada! Unbelievable. In, case, in case you were wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Keiyotaka chose the wrong answer. You're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful! I, I refuse to believe it! There's no way! No way he would kill someone! Sorry. Sorry. What? What is this? Why are you... Why are you apologizing? Why? 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 And it seems like Taka has sprung a leak. He's slightly leaky. 
Why did you do it? Now then. Well, it looks like Mondo's taken a vow of silence, so allow me to explain on his behalf. Actually, the story of murder this time is a sad story of two men. Ha! Oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the text button or the circle button to fast forward through the text. Anyway, there was a young boy, there was once a young boy, and his name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extremely inferior, uh, extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You're so weak, even though you're a boy. He heard things like that all along as he, as, as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and bury himself further and further into that weakness to take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. He had chosen that as his way out. Um. Now no one will be able to say even, uh, say anything about even though you're a boy. No matter how tightly he wrapped himself in that shell, the inferiority complex had already taken root deep inside of him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex dis didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. I'm weak. Weak. <laughs> Sorry, Chihiro. Weak. 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 Oh, I thought we were starting a new beat. Once the killing game began, had begun at the school, he had no choice but to accept, accept this fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. Of which, of course, included Chihiro's embarrassing secret. Which, of course, included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more willing to divulge. Which, 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 even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. Hey, um... And that was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If that was revealed, it would be the end. The hardened shell would crack and the armor would fade away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured that being tr uh, thrust in such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. And yet... Uh, I'm sorry. I don't really want to talk about it right now. But, but I also don't want to leave things the way they are, so maybe I could talk about it later. After I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone. Annoyingly, he used the thread of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That's right. That's right. Now's my Though chance. To change. I'm going to, change. to get stronger and accept who I am. Strong enough so when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that thought in front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so... That day he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his, uh, to retrain his mind and body. But sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. Hey, um... When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person a secret first, and then ask them to help him from there that person he went to yeah that's right yeah that's right, yeah, that's right. it was me <laughs> it sure was <laughs> the biker the biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were so chihiro probably figured out that he could confine with mondo his honor would make him keep the secret uh-huh plus Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of strong man that Chihiro was, had always aspired to. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help give me some courage. So he went. That says that it's being said by Chihiro, but that's obviously Monokuma. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. <laughs> That was his aspirations, and he thought that only with Mondo's support would he ever be able to come close to that. Correct. Correct. So then, that must have been when Mondo did what he did to keep the promise he made to Chihiro. 
Huh? Did what he did? You mean that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room to the girls' locker room? Indeed. Indeed. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Um... Was it that to cover up what he'd done? Certainly. Certainly. Could have been part of it, but I don't think that was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he made for Chihiro. But... But, but how does the body... keep his secret? Because... Because if everyone knew he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. So, he tried to protect the hero's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook. See? Then Mondo did all that to keep the promise he made to cheer hero, who he'd also killed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why would he do that? Ah! The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? <laughs> so why? Why did you? <sighs> because no matter what I did, or no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. I knew it. I knew it. That's what triggered it, after all. The possibility of having our embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. What? What is this? That's impossible. Nothing could have been that bad. Something he didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant killing someone? You're wrong. It's impossible. Don't make me repeat myself. That'll work. To judge others by your own standards is the height of the folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. <laughs> well, while we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? The embarrassing uh, memory, the secret he didn't want anyone to know! Hey, um... You know what Mondo did? He killed his own brother. <laughs> Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, make, makes all the hoodlums and riffraffs across the country tremble. But only reason he had the chance to join a gang is the first play in the first place was because of a certain someone. <laughs> Mondo's older brother's name was Di uh, Daya Owada. Mondo had nothing but respect for him, and it was because of Daya that Mondo ever got a m on a motorcycle. <laughs> vroom, vroom. Mondo's brother, Mondo's brother was his only family growing up. He was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted it. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he imitated every uh, him in everything he did. Mondo was the epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang. And before anyone knew it, it had grown into the biggest biker gang in the country. Daya, the older brother, number one to the gang, and is number two his younger brother, Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy. Who? But when Mondo started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his brother someday, his brother's greatness, reputation, began to gnaw at Mondo's very soul. The kid's going to take over for Daya, huh? Daya created the... Okay, this is like other people talking. And created the gang with his bare hands. Mondo's just along for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? All that'll do is make the gang look bad. <laughs> Almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of other gang members, or other members of the gang. Which is why... I... I just... I just... I gotta get stronger, stronger than Daya. Once, just one time. No matter what, I gotta don't win. with me. I don't care what it takes, I gotta come out on top. And on that night of the Amazing Brothers retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race! But during the race, tragedy struck. The kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed into oncoming traffic. But suddenly... Boom! Ah! Laying in his kid brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. My bad, kid. I fucked up. I'm sorry. Of course he knew it was his brother. What? Of course he knew it was his brother's fault, but Diane never blamed him for what happened. 
Hey, kid, the rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Because it's the team you and me put together. It's a, a promise between men. <laughs> he decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang. In order to keep the gang together, to keep the promise to his brother. He could never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that he caused the accident. And as a result... <laughs> the team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who bested his big brother. Daya was going to lose to his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation for what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. He wanted to lead the team so bad he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I... I just... I just... I'm strong. Yeah. Strong, 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 And yet... As soon as... <laughs> as soon as our killing game began, he realized... No matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. <laughs> and then the lovely and hate the hate and yet the lovely the hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. At that point it was clear I would have no problem shedding the light on his secrets. Mondo killed his own brother. Yeah. No matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother worked to create would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt I'd been carrying around, it would have been for nothing. So that's why... I, 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 that's why I... I Mondo. Yeah, yeah. After I saw what Monokuma had on me, my head filled up with this kind of fuzzy uneasiness. It just started swirling around. I never felt anything like it before. I... I just... I didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say, but after a while, the fuzzy uneasiness... It turned into a rock-hard lump of anxiety way down in my stomach. And it was ra right around then that Chihiro asked me to start working out with him. And right there, I... Uh, he told me a secret. Seriously? Jesus! Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry I lied to you. But why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Huh? Huh? Because, I mean, you've kept that secret all this time, right? If anyone found out, you would... But... but you're, you're right, but... I want, I want to change. Thank you, Chihiro. I wrapped myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife to my gut. I felt like he was exposing a lie I've been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong. I it can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. You piece of you piece of. So what? You're saying I should just say it? What? You're saying if I really what? am, I should just be able to tell everyone my secret? Uh -huh. huh? I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness, to try to overcome it. It was the kind of strength I never had. I was so jealous of him. That jealousy broke me. What? what? Are you what? making fun of me? I'm strong. Are you fucking with me right now? No. No. Uh, I'm not making fun of you. You're really strong, Mondo. Felt like I could hear something starting to creak. Something inside my head. What did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? I was supposed to just sit back, let my secret get revealed, and ruin everything? What's wrong? Damn you! Why did you have to tell me all that? Are you trying to rub my failure in my face? I, I just wanted to... Uh, no, I, I just really admire you. I admire your strength. Yeah, that's right. I am strong. Strong, I'm strong. That strong, sh strong, strong, strong. Stronger than you. You son of a bitch. And stronger than Daya. 
I don't remember anything after that. When I woke up, he was lying at my feet, covered in blood. I had the dumbbell in my hand, and I was just staring at him, down on the ground. Hey! I... I... killed him. Thank you for taking that. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. Mondo! He was normally he was normally so aggressive, so angry. He hid that weak side away from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness like that lived in a secret. A weakness like that lived in his in a heart like this, and it turned him cold-blooded. God damn it. Glad you're happy, Monokuma. Look at him, you see? You're just like him. For a secret from the past. For a memory. For that, he... He killed another living human being, human in cold blood. He couldn't cut free of his regret from the outside world. He doesn't know what true strength is. Don't you see hope anywhere in there? Because I sure don't. <laughs> right, bastard. Just shut up, you son of a bitch. Go ahead and say that again. I dare you. I can barely read that. Yep. So hold on. Okay. I'll say it as many times as I want. Is is that is what I want to say, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't do that right now because it's time for punishing is fast approaching. Uh, punishing? It can't be. You mean execution? Well well now well now well now that that's what i promised you right the black and that disturbs the peace will be punished ridiculous uh, hold on now then i prepared a very special punishment for mondo wada the ultimate biker gang leader <laughs> no wait wait let's give it everything we've got it's it's punishment time, punishment time. I said, wait! Sorry, man. Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made. Promise we made from one man to another. To another. The Cage of Death. I love Bonakuma hula hooping. Butter. <laughs> Laugh at death and your soul will forever be peace. At peace. It it can't be. My brother. Another murder and another execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. I'll take that one. He, he, he did that one perfectly. 
As Taka's sad screams invaded our skulls, we were each forced to realize once again. But of course, but he, of course he had to. <laughs> what a disappointment. This is the end of the game. Byakya. What is this? You're completely insane. You know that. A game? One of our friends is dead. You realize that. Naturally. Of course I do, because this game is life or death. Hey. hey. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response except that. However. I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? What? 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 No, that's why, not what. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. His voice was so calm, emotionless, like the voice of death. It chilled me to the bone. Last night, when the murder took place, I was in the library, as usual. Honestly. So you ignored the nighttime rule, too? Hmm. That rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. There is nothing to be done. Well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. <laughs> the night grew late, so I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. <laughs> I spotted Mondo coming out of the girls' locker room. After he yeah, after he'd gone, I looked inside and saw the corpse. What? what? You mean you actually witnessed the murder? <laughs> he was such a fool. He didn't have the slightest idea that I'd seen him. Well. That's right. So you're saying that you know the culprit was from the very beginning? Indeed. But if that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I mean, what a waste of time to have answer revealed right at the beginning. <laughs> Which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought I would liven things up. You did all that to liven things up? I see. So after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decided to use that to create a fake murder scene? But... Damn, man. If we hadn't figured out who'd really done it, you would have been dead too, right? <laughs> Obviously, I would have revealed the truth before it reached that point. Of course. Byaka turned and looked me in the eye. I could feel his sharp eye piercing through me. <laughs> Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, it never did. And I was able to perform an interesting experiment. <laughs> interesting. Once I do decide to become black, and I know who... I now know who I'll have to watch out for. What? Correct. So that was your reason. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Indeed. Yes, we're done listening to your story. Moving on. Hey. Hey. There's something I'd last that I'd like to ask Monokuma. What's this? What's this? Oh, I'm up next. You, you. You like to perform these elaborate execution each time. Executions each time, correct? My question is why? <laughs> Do you like them? But you know this punishment, this despair. It's not just for you. <laughs> all of this punishment, all this despair is a gift to mankind itself. What? You're over-exaggerating. <laughs> I'm not over-exaggerating. These punishments are meant to transfer all hope to despair. Damn. What do you mean? Huh? Mean? Mean? <laughs> mean? What the heck? Mean, 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 mean. Good grief! I don't understand why you have to pick apart every little stupid thing. Whatever, it doesn't matter. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as the victor, and then everything will be revealed to me. Ooh, how exciting! The noble son of a noble family. Truly, you understand me. <laughs> I think this is the start of a terrifying friendship. That's enough. Shut up. I would never stoop to the level of a childish criminal like you. Let me just say this. After I have achieved a complete victory, you're up next. Hmm. I'm going to find you and kill you. Understand? In the name of my family. Okay. For which victory is foregone... For which victory is a foregone conclusion. You're getting all riled up! Oh, so cool! It's like you're the main character of a video game or something! No trash mob for you! 
Swear, whatever it takes, I will kill you. <laughs> temper, temper! Sounds like someone needs a nap! <laughs> okay, he did that one himself. Monokuma's laughter peeled across the courtroom, and the curtain closed on the case of Chihiro and Mondo. But I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game would still continue, because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of us who were still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was the kind of despair that felt like blind puppy in hell had more of a future than us. Of all our courage, our effort, our friendship, felt like it mounted to nothing at all. It was... It was the worst kind of despair. Well, anyway, like I was saying... This is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? What? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. There's one thing I'd like to ask as you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away! Who is it? The 16th high school student, I mean. Oh, my, my. You really took me by surprise there. There is a 16th. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied! Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> So we have someone lurking inside. The working with Monokuma. Chapter two, end. There's two more down.